Hello. So in this activity, we are asked to design a current source. A current source is a circuit that delivers a constant load current, a current, to an arbitrary load that is independent of that load, an ideal current source. And in this case, we are going to do a voltage control current source, meaning that we can control that load current as a function of some input voltage. So it will be a programmable current source. And it is known as the Holland current source. So let's start with the topology of the circuit, the skeleton, then do the analysis, and then do an example. So the Holland current source relies on an operational amplifier. and a set of match resistors. This is very important. All these resistors that I'm using in the network are exactly match. So you're using this in a practical circuit. Make sure that you have perfectly match resistors. Otherwise, the performance decreases substantially. And so the idea here is that we want to be able to put here an arbitrary load, and we are providing a load current as a function of the input voltage and these resistors, but that the load current is independent of the load resistance. So this is our circuit here, our current source. Okay. So now that we have the topology, skeleton, Let's do the analysis. Now I mentioned a general strategy for analyzing all of these linear amplifier, operational amplifier circuits. And that's that you look at the input terminals, the non-inverting input and the inverting input. And you just do circuit analysis, you apply nodal analysis to those to, to those inputs. So I typically will start by selecting the one that is more complex. In this case, we have the non-inverting input. And I apply Kirchhoff carbon law there. And then we will analyze the other input. And the third step is going to use the fact that if you have negative feedback, and in this case we have negative feedback because we have a pathway from the output back to the non-inverting input, and that path does not get disconnected, I mean, it's not like an open switch in some condition of the circuit, then you have a virtual uh, connection, right? The, the, uh, the output of the operational amplifier, the operational amplifier is going to change its output so that the non-inverting input gets very close to the inverting input. And we use that to solve, really, for, for the equations. So let's do it. Kirchhoff current law. We have the sum of currents leaving the node is equal to zero. I'm talking about the node Vn in this case. So let's do those currents. We have this current, this current, this current, and the low current. We have four currents, right? So first one, Vn minus V input over R. So current is difference in potential, difference in voltage over R, over resistance, plus we have the current going back to the output node, right? And that's Vn minus V out over R, plus we have the bias current going to the non-inverting input of the operational amplifier, but that's zero, approximately zero. So I'm not going to put it. And then we have the load current, IL equal to zero. Again, what are we trying to do here? We are trying to find an expression for this IL in terms of the input voltage and the resistive network. And hopefully, if this is going to be a current source, it's going to be independent of RL. So, now 
My question, let's do the analysis in the other node. Kirchhoff current law. In some cases, you do not even have to do nodal analysis, right? Like when we were doing the inverting amplifier, we have the, the non-inverting input just connected to ground. In this case, also technically you don't have to do nodal analysis or even apply Kirchhoff current law because since the input bias current in the non-inverting input of the amplifier is approximately equal to zero, this is a voltage divider. You know that Vn is just one half of V out because the resistance are equal. But in general, you will need to apply Kirchhoff current law at, in this case, the non-inverting input. Oh, over here, sorry, the inverting input before it will be a P there. So let's just do it. Uh, and what we are going to come up, uh, we know the result is that the Vn is one half P out. So we have this current living, and that's Vn minus zero divided by R plus the current entering into the inverting input of the amplifier, the bias current, which is zero under ideal conditions. And then we have Vn minus V output over R equal to zero. Now, if we do some algebra here, we find that we have one over R plus one over R times Vn equals two V output over R or two over R Vn is equal to 1 over R V output, cancel the R's, and you find that the output is equal to 2 Vn, or Vn is half of the output. Okay, so what is the third step? The third step, once you have these equations, is to recognize that if you have negative feedback, feedback like in this case, Vn is equal to Vp. Again, the output of the operation amplifier gets adjusted so that the inverting input terminal gets very close to the non-inverting in voltage. Now, sometimes, it's, and I'm going to say approximately equal to, sometimes the students, because they, they, they know internally the model of the operation amplifier, that the output is equal to A times Vp minus V, and ask me, well, if they are equal, if this is zero, the output always will be zero. Well, just remember, this gain, let's say, is going to be 10 to the 6 for a particular operation amplifier, very high. The output, if you are plus minus 15, let's say, is in the order of 10. So this difference, we are talking about a 10 to the minus 5 difference. So the difference between VP and VN is very small in the order of 10 to the minus 5, 10 to the minus 6, depending on the operation amplifier, and that's why we can do that. Okay, so let's continue with the analysis. <clears throat> so, here, we have this Vn, that we want to put it in terms of the output voltage. And now we have a relationship here, Vn to the output voltage, so we just can go ahead and plug it back. And uh, let's do some algebra at the same time. And so we have 1 over 2R V output yes, minus V input over R plus 1 over 2R V output minus V output over R plus IL equal to zero. So let's see what we have here. One thing to re recognize is that one over 2R V out, one over 2R V out plus minus this all cancels out. And so we have a solution. Actually, we can see that IL, given that this is this, this, and this cancels, is equal to 1 over R times V input. So that was the first part of the activity. Final expression 
for the low load current. And notice that the load current is independent of the low resistance, right? We are also asked to uh, find the transconductance, since this is a voltage control current source. Uh, GM is defined as the ratio between the output current to the input voltage. In this case, we are talking about the output current is the load current, so this is 1 over R, V input. This is V input. So the transconductance is 1 over R. Okay. Okay. And then we are asked to determine the the operation operational conditions to ensure linear ideal operation of the circuit. Before we do that, let's let's do a, a quick example so that we see this as a current source. So let's consider that I ask you to design or that you need to design, to use a different color for this, uh, one milliamp current source. Well, how will you do this? Well, you simply go ahead and put maybe, let's, let's imagine for the input voltage, I'm going to do one volt. Right? And if I put for the resistors, so input voltage equals one volt, R equals one kilo ohm, and you got it. Right? If you wanted to do a two milliamps, you just will change the input voltage to two volts, and etc. So you have a voltage control current source. You can program it to any current you want as a function of this voltage for a set of resistors. And notice that that's independent of RL, ideally. But in reality, you know that all current sources have limited compliance. Compliance. What is that? The maximum voltage at the output of a current source for which the current is constant. Okay? Meaning, you see this behavior for current sources that for low loads, no problem. But as you go increasing the load, RL, initially, you have a stiff current source. In this case, so you have a constant I, I load, in this case, 1 milliamp. But eventually, all current sources have this behavior, right? You're not able to provide a constant current to an arbitrary load, okay? So you have here a, a region over which it behaves ideally. It's a stiff current source, and then a region where you are out of compliance. And so, what would be the maximum load for which this circuit will work? How do we calculate that? Why will it stop working? It has to do with the second part of the activity, the terming, the operation conditions to ensure linear operation of the circuit. So let's, let's do that. What happens is that as you increase the RL, this voltage is going to keep going up and up. And actually the circuit, remember, so this was A, the expression for the load current, B, ensure linear operation. And what do we need to ensure linear operation? That our output voltage is less or equal to the saturation voltage. Saturation voltage is related to the powering up of the operation amplifier, minus VEE plus BCC, and uh, we need that, therefore an expression for the output voltage, which we already got. Remember this expression for the output voltage that, that we got here? The output voltage is 2 times Vn here. So this is, a, this is Vp, it's equal to Vn, but which is equal to two times VP. And VP, in terms of the RL, do we have an expression? Yes, this is IL times RL. And this needs to be, this is two times, less than the saturation. Or you can say that IL times RL needs to be less or equal 
to one half the V saturation to ensure linear operation. Okay, great. So in this case, let's imagine that we power this up with a plus minus 15 voltage source, and this is one milliamp. Well, the maximum voltage that we are able to provide is half of our source, sorry, half of our power supply, so 7.5 volts. Since this is one milliamp, the maximum area will be 7.5 kilo ohms. Does it make sense? So we have one milliamp times RL less or equal to Vsat over two. So if I consider this to be exactly in the best case scenario, 15 volts, I have 7.5, the maximum. 7.5 divided by one milliamp, we got 7.5 kilo ohms. So what will happen is exactly that. This will stay stiff over this region, one milliamp, from zero ohms all the way to 7.5 kilo ohms and then goes down. Let's imagine that in your application, you have a loads that go as high as 10 kilo ohms. Well, what will you need to do in this case? You will need to power the operation amplifier with a plus minus 20 or plus minus 25 if you want some room. Thank you.